All right, and it is Monday, so it is time. Kathy Holman, Prairie Wife and Heels, joins us, and we're talking about holiday stress dun, today. Dun, this dun, is dun, what I've been dun. doing all day, holiday stress. <laughs> stress. I told Kathy it stressed me out just mm-hmm. to see the photo <laughs> you know, know, of the woman being stressed out. I know, I know. This is one of my things, and I try. It's and everyone's I, thing, I, apparently. I, apparently, uh, 69% of people are stressed out, um, feeling that there's not enough time um, and 51% are stressed out about the pressure to give or get gifts. And 45% of Americans would like to skip Christmas altogether. Oh, no <laughs> kidding. 45%. That is from allonehealthy.com. And that was depressing. Like that depressed me. 45% of people would just like to just skip the whole thing altogether. Well, maybe they mean the gift thing. The, the whole the whole ex, the expensive part. I'm going to be a negative Nancy for once and say, no, I'm pretty sure they mean skip the whole entire holiday experience. Aww. That's I think I'm going to go with that, which is and also the watch stress. love actually sing a couple of carols and then move on. Look, you know. you've got some great ideas. And we actually, believe it or not, will be not just talking about what causes holiday stress. But, you know, us, we're always going to help you to beat whatever thing it is we're talking about. So, Roger, file that away for when All we right. talk about ways to ease holiday stress. Uh. So Susan has already expressed that holidays stress her out. Susan, on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you say your stress level is? I'm going to say like a 10 is those people that just want to skip Christmas. Oh, uh, do you mean right at the moment? Yes. Oh, I'd say I'm probably sitting around 5 or 6 right at the moment. Okay, now what are you going to be like? I'm down the, the yeah. t- down the hill on the toboggan right now. <laughs> to... So what would you say, okay, let's look overall. What do you think your holiday stress is usually, like on a number 1 to 10? Seven, seven, eight. Yeah, Roger, seven, what about eight. you? Seven, eight. Okay, uh, Roger. Not uh, well. Uh, stre- dread. It's not. It's it's more dread <laughs> than stress. Oh my god. Because I just so I sad. just know how bloody <laughs> expensive it's going to be. Oh, you, know? you and my husband. Uh, uh, is he like accidentally your? And kid I only or have one kid, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How bad can it be? Yeah. Okay, Frank, are you on? Did we lose you? No, I'm here. Okay, Frank, what what's would my, you... What's my number? Yeah, your holiday Zero. stress number. Good for you. And why is that? Because, because I am broke and nobody's getting anything. <laughs> See, okay, I there think it's are. fascinating that every that most people go to the money part mm-hmm. when they're talking about holiday stress. Right, we had, and that's not mine sure. at all. Well, right, mine either. We're, we're going to, this is all going to circle around. Okay, okay, so we had lots of listeners. So every weekend we put up our topic with a question on the K2 Radio Facebook page and the listeners can comment. So Joey said, um, and the question was, what stresses you out about the holidays? Marianne said no money. Joey said not having enough money for gifts, just bill bills. Jessica said money. Catherine said struggling from paycheck to paycheck. Um, Janelle said money. Uh, like it just goes on and on. I mean, everyone said money stresses them out. And I was telling Susan, my husband and I have lived paycheck to paycheck. As Roger mentioned, we have five children. Um, the money part has never, ever stressed me out ever. The buying the great gift, mm-hmm. not having enough money to buy a gift, that has never stressed me out. Even when we've been like, hmm, who are we going to pay on the 15th and who are we going to pay right. on the 21st, mm-hmm. which we have been there before. For me, the stress comes from, is my house clean before guests come? Am I going to be able to make it to every party I'm invited to so no one gets their feelings hurt? Am I going to be able to cook that perfectly crisp pie from scratch? Oh, so you're the perfectionism. I mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I'm the, I'm the, it's about the you know, getting to the party on time, having a big party at my house. Um, all that's what stresses See, me I don't out. Do parties very much. That's so. what stresses me out is that aspect of it, not the money part. And I just found it so interesting that that's what so many people focus on. Because if we're just going to be touchy feely here for a second, Christmas isn't about. Money, money and gifts. Right. Well, I know. It's not. Let's so go back to that. Yeah. So it's of course not. it is. <laughs> Absolutely not. Look look at the marketing world. Are you well, telling me it's not? I know what you're saying, but oh, like please. no. It's do you want to do you want to hear be. what we do in our family? My poor kids. They they have no idea they're deprived, but they are. So um I have five children. Okay. My yeah. husband and I get each kid a gift mm-hmm. together. So yeah. it's a gift from mom and dad, and mm-hmm. that's usually a bigger gift. And then the siblings get each other gifts that are usually around $25. Sometimes it ends up being $9.99 because of what they pick, and then mm-hmm. another kid can get that. And then Santa Claus usually brings three gifts, and that's it. Yeah. That's all we do. 
And my kids well, have never been disappointed. Enough. Yeah, it's, are you kidding me? That's I mean, plenty. They've never been disappointed ever. They write a letter to Santa and they ask for two gifts and they know they're only going to get one of them. You know, and our favorite gifts are almost always the stockings on Christmas morning, mm -hmm. which are just the full little of fun. little bitty fun, you know, quirky mm -hmm. things. That's mm -hmm. what people look forward mm -hmm. to. But for me, it's not, it's not the money unless we're trying to travel you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and then it's like trying to get, make sure we have enough money sure. to travel yeah you know for me it's that i have a tendency to say yes to too many things yeah so That's, you know yep. i'm looking at yep. it now mm -hmm. see i just finished casper civic corral the church mm -hmm. is singing a cantata we got to decorate mm -hmm. the church and then we have the scandinavian bake sale coming up so we mm -hmm. got to set up for that and then mm -hmm. i have to do that you know and so every every weekend or all of my free time is committed to something and I don't have that time to sit back and be still. And that's where I agree. You know? That's what I was saying with the parties and everything. And we're normal because for whatever that means, but we are <laughs> according to psychology today.com, the 10 common holiday stresses are, I can't get it all done. I have too many parties. I'm exhausted. It's all too much. Mm. Yep. So I'm, exa I'm exhausted and it's all too much. So wow, here wow, well, wow. I know it's hard to be so loved and have so many parties to go to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wow, kidding. Wow. I'm just kidding. I know it's, it's the so activities, weak. it's the volunteering and all that. And I'm just teasing Susan because that's exactly yeah. where my stress comes from too. So here's the deal. Um, will the Mercedes with the bow on it arrive in time? Yeah. <laughs> oh no. That, you see in the commercial. I do not think. Yeah. yeah, that's not happening at my house yeah. unless it's like a Power Wheels one. There you go. <laughs> well, and, and to take a more serious turn as well you know for a lot of people the holidays bring up uh loss mm -hmm. you know uh we lost dad uh this will be my second christmas without dad the first one you know since he died in mid-november mm -hmm. it was pretty full of shock and numbness mm -hmm. you know this one is the one where you really see the empty place at the table or yeah. we say oh we're gonna go back to iowa and see dad uh, oh, oh yeah. yeah you know he's yep. not there yep so you know, there's a there's a longing for the loved ones who you used to spend the holidays with. Mm -hmm. And that it brings up a lot of loss for a lot of people. And change, I think, because yeah. you can't have those same traditions. So right. you guys used to, you know, so so that's something too. Um, Dan and I, when we got married and had kids, we said we are always having Christmas at our house. We're doing that. Anyone that wants to come and join us, my parents, my brother came last year and spent Christmas with us. That's fine. But we started that new tradition mm -hmm. that it was going to be Christmas at our house. Any other holiday, we don't really care. We'll travel if people want us to. But Christmas at our house. And I think that um, what you were saying right there were, is a example. How can you celebrate those old traditions and incorporate the memory of your loved one? Mm -hmm. But how can you do something new for your family as it is now because families are always changing kids get married they move away people pass away and and i think that's important to be cognizant that that's coming up this time of year right and, and i do be sensitive add, for yourself about that since we're on this subject i mm -hmm. reached out to my friend todd who's the chaplain at yes, hospice last such a night good idea. you know mm -hmm. and he said they do have a remembrance event that's coming up december uh 2nd at 5 p.m mm. you pick up a paper ornament at the hospice ahead of time uh decorate it with the names and art and whatever it is and you can hang it on the tree and on the second, they gather for words of comfort and hope in a balloon release. And if anybody in the community needs care or assistance navigating the holidays, you know, the, the, he's a bereavement coordinator mm -hmm. and you can just give them a call over at mm -hmm. hospice. And so I, that's a good thing to know. And I Thank think you, it's Todd. okay to be sad too. I think that's okay. Yeah. You know, I, some people, oh no, we have to have this perfect. So that's part of that hol that I was talking about. It has to be right. perfect. It has to be perfect. Everything has to be the huge present under the tree and, and, and nothing's going to ever live up to that. I could not tell you, honestly, a single gift I got for Christmas, a specific Christmas gift my parents got me. But I will always remember coming home from Midnight Mass and the snow coming down in Wisconsin and seeing the the reindeer tracks and the presence from Santa by the fireplace and that feeling of my dad always falling asleep half an hour into Christmas on the couch, right? <laughs> That's what I remember about Christmas. And right. anyone I've talked to, they don't remember one single fabulous, amazing gift. It's the feeling. And it's so much easier, I think, to have that happiness around the season if you focus on reproducing that feeling of family and togetherness. Mm -hmm. And something I learned um, two years ago when I went through the mastectomy procedure, it's major surgery every three months, and I had surgery two days before Thanksgiving. And so I could not 
do the Thanksgiving stuff. Mm -hmm. Christmas had to be pared down. We couldn't go cut down a Christmas tree, which is one of our traditions. We've done it ever since we got married. We go to the mountains, cut down a Christmas tree, the pictures on our Christmas card. Um, And guess what? Everything was okay. (laughs) <laughs> I only threw sure, one party right. instead of three. I said no to a lot of people and a lot of events and everyone still loved me. People still made eye contact with me. They mm-hmm. didn't avoid me. And my kids still had an amazing time. And I even probably had a better time because I wasn't freaking out. And I have taken that lesson and moved forward with my poor husband. Like I just think back now to all the stress I put him before we had people. You have to, yeah, this has to be. And I didn't enjoy any of it because I was so exhausted by the time the guests showed up. So now, guess what? Sometimes I buy the pre-made food from Sam's Club, and it's still all gone it because works. everyone still eats sure. it. But to be sure. fair, sometimes, sometimes you know, it's nice to have those feelings of family. <laughs> sometimes it's your family that is stressing Amen. you out. Oh, I can, right? I, I can, yeah, I can agree with that. And so therein lies the boundaries, right? And the self-care. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna have dinner at Grandma's because I love Grandma, and we don't know how many more dinners. But I'm gonna leave after three hours, and I'm okay with that. That. Right. Yeah. Or what What about, what, what was that you said, Roger, when yeah. your uncle starts talking politics? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just he wants to argue politics with you. That's when I, that's when I, I turn on, turn on just, the ball game or go yeah. or go watch It's a Wonderful Life Bing. or something. I'm yeah. Just, yeah, I'm just yeah. laughing because my older brother and I could not be more politically different mm-hmm. if we, like, we are the exact opposite on every single major issue, but it's fine. Like it's fine. fine. It doesn't bother. But I read a post on Facebook. This lady said that for Thanksgiving, her mother handed out kazoos to everyone. And anytime (laughs) someone started talking politics, they had to blow the kazoos. It was just a no. And I think that's perfectly acceptable to say. I like that. I think it. And of course, you know, you might get the whole drunk uncle that, 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 doesn't care and we'll talk or over aunt. the kazoos but i <laughs> but i think just making making those expectations clear and draw boundaries for yourself and mamas with babies go back and nurse that baby for 3 hours in the back bedroom if that's what you need to do to get sanity and it's okay to this was always hard for me let me hold my baby at family gatherings everyone wanted to hold the baby and i get it but like i want my baby like mm-hmm. i always joke i don't see my kids the whole time my parents are here i miss them um and it's okay to say that it's okay okay to say you know hey once again boundaries 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 Mm -hmm. boundaries 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 yeah you can come stay at the house but two days right right not you can't and you can't really say no you know everybody steer clear of politics or whatever well you can try Uh, you can try well (laughs) how do you say that diplomatically you don't you just say hey say okay we're not talking politics yeah make Mm -hmm. a joke about it like with the kazoos i I have done that in family dinners in the past and you know with some people who are no longer with us but you know i i had that uncle and we were Mm -hmm. wow polar opposite Mm -hmm. and he would say some things that would just make the hairs on the back of my neck stand up and Mm -hmm. you know and and i would just look at him and he would do it to bait me you know he enjoyed that oh of course debate me so like me and frank we would just (laughs) much worse than you and frank do i need to buy susan a kazoo Uh for christmas i would just look at him and say you know we're not going there and I'm not right and it's not okay that. and it's so, okay and if you do it cubs? yes if you do it politely and respectfully i don't think mm-hmm. anyone's going to have a problem with it and i think too to remember too this is just today this is not right now um i admit that there were times when i was newly married and a new mom like i said that i was just completely overwhelmed by family functions that lasted 8 10 hours utterly exhausted it would take me days or we would travel 5 hours to get somewhere and be there for 3 days and and i wish now that that I would have set boundaries for myself and said, mm-hmm. you know what? I want to see them. Let's do it this time. Let's not do it this time. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's stay at a hotel so I can go away for six hours with the baby and rest while you stay with the other kids. Um, don't be afraid to say that. I think everyone understands. And if they don't, meh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So as usual, we have some helpful hints to try to navigate all this stress, mm-hmm. but we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we can, we can help you through all this. <laughs> okay. You ready to take notes, Roger and Frank? You got it. Yeah. Okay. We'll be right back. It is 938 and we are back with Kathy Holman, Prairie Wife in Heels and Roger and Frank. And mm-hmm. we're talking 
holiday stress. <laughs> How to get over a holiday stress. Because 45% of Americans would like to skip Christmas, and that is unacceptable. That, that is unacceptable. I am we not okay with Christmas. that attitude. No, no, no. Um, so we talked about the stress coming from all the pressure to mm-hmm. do different activities, to have everything and to be, be perfect. perfect. Yes. Yeah. And we have told you, ixnay it. If someone bothers you about it, say Prairie Wife and Susan said it was okay. I don't have to go to your party if it's stressing me out. Oh. My house doesn't have to be perfect and I can get stuff from Sam's Club. It doesn't have to be perfect. It is much better to have a pleasant attitude and be in it to win it and enjoy time with your friends. And I am saying this as someone who used to be the stressaholic about it and yeah. now has learned to just, I think I'm just much more fun now. I think my husband would agree. <laughs> um well, if I can, I read Carolyn's. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. My, my friend yep. Carolyn mm-hmm. said, yep. "Don't do what you don't want to do. Amen. If others are let down or disappointed by your wanting to take care of yourself and enjoy the holidays, that's on them, not on They're you." They're probably just jealous because they wish they could say no without feeling guilty. Right. <laughs> I'm not good at that. I'm learning, but I am not. Good I at that. am a work in progress on that as well. So. According to Forbes.com, they mm-hmm. did a study of over 2,000 men and women, and women will be 11% more stressed than men this holiday season. Well, there's a surprise. Roger Frank, do you have a guess as to why women are 11% more stressed than men? Because you're doing the cooking by and large. Because we're doing the cooking. By I do the, the list of gifts to get. I keep track of which kid has gotten gifts for who. Yeah. Um, my husband's mother, which I'm so excited, is coming for Christmas. And so I said, okay, we're going to need to get gifts for, for her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's like, oh, yeah, huh. What are you going to get them? <laughs> like, so we are the we ones keep, take yeah, care of the decorating the house. Take care of the yeah, uh-huh. decorating the house, making sure the tree is watered. So let me ask Because we this. wouldn't do it. Well, no. If yeah, they were no. up to us, we wouldn't do it. Uh, no. It I would, was just going to ask, Roger and Frank, yeah. would, would you care? I mean, would that make a difference if Kathy and I sat back and said, oh, we're on strike here? Yeah, if your holidays. wife or significant other yourself, or whatever. Would that matter? Oh, like I'm going to haul the tree out and, and, and put it all? No. That we, no, you it just would be. Would it, don't you think that'd be sad? We're going to, we're going to, we'll put out a couple of candles and. You wouldn't and, be and sad? watch a lovely movie. So yeah. part of this is, Kathy, is that we have our own expectations of yeah. what, it, what, mm-hmm. yeah. what we want it yeah. to be. And so, and they're not going to. Put, in, uh, <laughs> put anything into it. There, yeah. we're gonna lump I there into that. all men. I don't honestly. Yeah, I don't no, know see, a guy. My, yeah, my husband will. He he dives right in. He decorates really? it. No, oh, mine, yeah. mine. Absolutely. <laughs> mine, I am not lying to you. My, I married Scrooge McDuck. Mm-hmm. Um, he was. I just lectured him in the middle of Sam's Club. Sorry, sweetheart, because he's like, remember, don't get me anything for Christmas. I don't want to, Roger, like you. I don't yeah. want anything for Christmas. Don't spend no. the money. And I said, finally, finally, I, I know what you're gonna say Roger because I heard it from him and so finally in the middle of Sam's Club I said you know what this isn't about you (laughs) I said this is also how good do you feel when you give the kids and I gifts by Mm -hmm. acting like this and by saying over and over I don't want anything don't buy me anything you are robbing the kids and I of the joy of going and finding that perfect gift for you that might might make make a smile. Yeah. And even more so the kids than me. Like, so I kind of, I lectured him. So kind of remember that my, my fellow bah humbugs Mm -hmm. out there that I get it. But so here, Dory agrees with me. She hates when other people take the joy away and are cranky with Christmas. Uh I get it. It's okay. Yeah. You know what? I did spend all weekend watching cheesy Christmas movies. And I forced him to watch one, and it hasn't been Thanksgiving yet, but there's snow, and it's acceptable. And just smile and be happy. Well, the good movies, not the ones on Lifetime. Yeah. The, no, the it was Hallmark. the Netflix ones. Oh, my oh, gosh, okay. they're well, so there you go. good. Oh. Yeah. And my three-year-old's like, cheesy Christmas movie, cheesy Christmas movie. I've taught her well. So, anyway, don't be a bah humbug, and I get it. Like, I meet him in the middle. I understand what he's saying. He has mm-hmm. everything he wants, and if he wants something, he buys it. But also remember, it's not just about getting gifts. You need to be gracious. Yes. I can ne- well, I'm, oh, I'm, oh, Susan, I, say I that louder. You need to be gracious in your accepting of gifts. Thank well, you. of course. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I would is. never say this is awful, but <laughs> I, when people ask me what I want, I can never think of anything because, like your husband, yeah. eh, if I need it, I get it. If mm-hmm. I don't need it, 
I don't spend the so money. So then you just, as Susan said, graciously say, whatever you would like will be lovely. Well, that would be fine. What yeah. I see right there, whatever you uh, get will be and fine. And when the bad Christmas tie shows up yeah. under the tree for you, Roger. It'll go on, it'll go on the I, rack with all the other. I do <laughs> have to, I do, <laughs> that's funny. I do have to say that my husband, as much as he bought humbugs and everything like that, he has, com- I have broken his spirit and he decorates the house and outside with lights every single year. That is what he mm. does. He, at the risk He's of his own guy. peril, he has actually done such a lovely job that the Casper Star Tribune wrote an article about driving down the Glenrock Highway and seeing the big, beautiful house lit up with Christmas lights in the middle of darkness. And that was us. So, I gave, yes. I gave up the outside lights long ago. Yeah, I'm not letting yeah. him until he has a cane. He has to do it. And then our sons can step up to the plate. But but really, as much as he bought humbugs, like I know that he does love seeing the kids get excited and mm-hmm. and everything. But but maybe hopefully if he's listening to this, he can have a conversation and, and say no a little bit more. What does stress him out and and have a conversation? Well, let's go there because yeah. you know, what are the, what are the helpful hints? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we kept on teasing you guys, and here I am going Before off on a tangent. Time, what, what? Prairie wife Navigating going off on a tangent? Those. Okay, Amazing. do less, enjoy more. Okay. Forget mm-hmm. perfection. Abandon old customs and create new traditions. I think that's really important. And you and I were talking a little mm-hmm. bit about this mm-hmm. off air. Mm-hmm. You know, is, is that it used to be for me, every ornament had to go on the tree. You know, and these ornaments mm-hmm. had to go on the kids' tree, but these ornaments had to go over here. Mm-hmm. And whatever, And now mm-hmm. I've gotten the point, it's like, you know, this is enough. This is good. <laughs> yeah. You know, or yep. we would always, it's like, well, we always did this. We always made wassail on Christmas Eve. We always, mm-hmm. you yeah. know. And Five I, hours I of baking. I hurt myself trying to get mm-hmm. that done. It was mm-hmm. like, is the world going to fall in if we don't have that? No. Who's going to miss it most? Me. Am I going to miss it if I don't have to spend the three hours? Amen. You know, yep. See, no, right so. there. Another um, Mm -hmm. thing was spend time outdoors, sunshine, fresh air, take a break from all of it, leave Mm -hmm. your phone. And just get outside, take a walk around the block, Not especially the it's, yeah, leave that phone, less tech. That's another one on there. Don't compare. Some people <laughs> take those pictures phone. of the presents piled five feet wide under the tree and put them up and good for them if that's what it's about and good for them if that gives them happiness and joy but do not compare yourself to that and you know what if your kid wants the $500 game system and you can't afford it <laughs> do not feel guilty about that uh-huh. do not I don't. or if your kid's a little punk when they don't get what they want under the Christmas tree use it as a time to teach them a lesson we call that a teachable moment mm-hmm. in our house mm-hmm. a teachable mm-hmm. moment um, citrus actually helps brighten your mood so essential oils citrus or you boil um an orange and some cinnamon and water on your stove have it at or a simmer spiced cider mm-hmm. mold yep spice. yep yeah, just have it simmering just so that you get that mood that feeling um music actually can be a big stress reliever mm-hmm. maybe if you're a bah humbug not christmas carols but something else but turn the music on relax a little bit volunteer and have an attitude of gratitude i love that one and there is a well, that's lot. probably the way to spend the holiday. Right. I mean, if, you really, yeah. if you really want to honor the event, yes. d- do something for somebody yes. else. Yes. Stop worrying about the money. And, the and that way, you know, make her forget the PlayStation. Yes. <laughs> that's know? what I mean. Like, it's not about the gifts. It's not. It's not. It's just not. And you can always find an opportunity to volunteer around the mm-hmm. holidays. Sure. There are mm-hmm. so many organizations mm-hmm. that need the extra Walk hand. into any church and say, do you have a family I can sponsor? And even if you just get two Two toys that you give that helps go towards that Christmas for that family right. instead of sponsoring the whole, whole thing. Adopted family thing. With yes. Many, many families Wyoming and, Food for Thought has yes. lots of opportunities, which, by the way, you can take your kids. Wyoming Food for Thought, you can take your kids with you to do almost anything they're doing. They're probably packing the bags for the children that don't have food over break. What a and great the library, lesson. I know, is taking canned goods. Yeah, teach your kids that. It is not too late to turn turn their attitude Speaking around. Speaking of that, mm-hmm. have you seen the reverse advent calendar? No. Mm-hmm. So instead of, you know, I'm in advent shock. calendar, no. you get little toys or chocolates or yeah, whatever every sure. day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The reverse advent calendars, you get a box and every day of advent, you put in Something one to item, donate. A item to donate. Mm-hmm. Oh. So whether it's mm-hmm. the pair of socks or a blanket mm-hmm. or a can of beans mm-hmm. or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever it is. And then you take that at the end of advent and you, and you donate it. I love that. I idea. love that. That is a great idea. 
I love that. So there you go. It's so that whole, minute. yeah, well, we have one minute one left. Minute. What are we going to say? Remember the reason for the season. Don't get stressed out. You still have plenty of time to re-educate educate and rewire your kids' brains if their expectations are completely out of sync. And I still, I still love Carolyn's don't do what you don't want to yes, do. Yes, boundaries, boundaries, mm. boundaries, and just have fun. Take time to play. Take time to play and spend time with your loved ones. It doesn't have to be family, loved ones, well, friends. And also, too, if you're struggling in any way, shape, yes, or form, please, ask for help. please reach out. Whether it's to your family, whether mm -hmm. it's to a counselor, whether, mm -hmm. you know, whoever it is, please reach out because the holidays are really, really tough times for some people yes. and folks, you know, please be There's patient. help out there. Please There's help out there. Yeah. Because it can be really yes. tough. Yes. Yes. Okay. Very good. Any, any last words, Roger? Uh, the good thing about being my age is that people lower their expectations of you. <laughs> they call you at 8 p.m. and say, did I wake you? So. <laughs> That's, that's oh, the, I can't the wait. It, I so. can't wait. <laughs> Frank, any more bah humbugs from you? It's better to receive than give. Yeah. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Oh, I love Gracious it. Gracious receiving. Okay, thank you so much. Happy Thanks holiday. for having me. Prairie Wife and Heels. See you next week.